Welcome back, book club hosted by Heather Skinner for part two of our interview with Joni Hughes, the author of Growing Only Dandelions. Please remember to like and subscribe and click the notification bell while you're watching. I saw a post on, of yours on Facebook. I thought it was so cool the way you like, you feel like your characters are coming to life in someone's head every time yes. you know that it's being bought again, which I just thought was such a beautiful description. I love that. I really believe that when someone's reading my book, they're coming back to life. Like they, they get another opportunity to have an impact on someone. I, I love that idea. So I'm always, I always post, if you're reading my book, let me know, because it really makes me very happy. <laughs> yeah, I love the way you keep track and you're and so encouraging. I hope that your readers, when they buy your book, they they find your pages. Because I've uh, noticed when you know that someone's bought one, you, you're you like, I hope that you enjoy the journey and you have this yes. wonderful post for your Thank readers. you. Thank yeah, you. I think that's such a great way to keep in contact. So I hope they're all finding you on your pages after they they purchase your book. Because sometimes they do. Cool. They and they I'll also I'll receive a message. Just I I just read your book and I just wanted to let you know that it really you know impacted me. And then I that's when I start talking to them. Do a little private book discussion because I like hearing how it made them feel. How which character you know they really related to, or you know did you really have a problem with the father? Obviously he did something horrible. But what about you know that that scene, uh, you know, in one chapter when he got off the line, you know, did, did that mean, and it's funny because some people be like, no, off with his head. And others were like, oh, I could see how that was a gesture that, you know, he was trying to, you know, redeem himself in some fashion. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to take that. Yes. And I bet it does resonate with your readers in many different ways. Yes. One and again, thing that's I why I always say there's a big disclaimer on my book. There is, it is about abuse, child abuse, and it's a hard topic. But if you could get past that, you'll see why it's there. It, 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 there's a point to it. It's not just there, you know, to be, I don't know, dramatic. It's, it's there for a point. It, it, it shows you the whole Bethany journey, which is important to see. Yes. How was that for you as an author to write? Because you do come from a place of so much emotion. Um, did you have to take a lot of breaks? Like, were you just kind of like, whew, that's heavy. I got to go back to this. <laughs> um, actually, when I would get into that state, I wanted to stay in it so that I could give it really an authentic representation, not to walk away from it. Once you're, I mean, and you've said you you write as well. Once you're in, once you're in that mode, you don't want to break from it. But when I and it's very, very difficult to write. I, I do take breaks, but once those those scenes, I, I did want to stay there, but I wouldn't, I never really took it too far because I didn't, you know, I, I, I try to keep it PG-13. I didn't want to, you, you knew what was going on and I didn't need to take you there. So it was, it was a difficult write and it's a difficult read, but I think it's important. I know there's a lot of people who have been abused, you know, especially young children. And I, I chose that scenario because I, I really wanted in my mind to show the ugliest thing I could show, to show the most beautiful thing I could show. <laughs> That's why. Which I love that. I love that whole, you know, you got to get through that to, to get to that beauty and everyone can get there, whatever your struggle is. Exactly. Kind of from that. Exactly. And it's beautifully done. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, and that brings me, oh my goodness, you are so busy with your writing schedule. So you have three kids. Yes, you work as a paralegal. Yes. You are the founder and president of a not-for-profit charitable organization called JT's Law Foundation Corp. Correct. Um, and you wrote your book. Yes. And you draw. Yes. Uh, you're so busy. How did you fit all this into your schedule? Do you have a set schedule? My children, to be fair, are grown. So that's a lot easier. When they were younger, when Gemma's Gem aged, yes, that was that's a lot of work right there. But now they're older and they're grown and they're very independent and they're wonderful, wonderful kids. As far as my other activities, uh, I do, I'm very disciplined. I, I want to draw that drawing. I want to finish this book. So I, I make time, even if I stare at the computer to write, even if I'm just staring at it. I will say every night I have to sit for an hour and at least stare at the screen because I want this. I, I have a goal that I set for myself. I cannot imagine me not completing this. Or when I, when I am commissioned a drawing, I have a responsibility to these people and the drawing part of it, like I said, it's methodical and it's, it's pleasant and it's peaceful. It's still hard <laughs> and it does require time, but it, I love giving it, even though they buy it, it's still a gift. And I love their I love their expressions when they get it and how how happy they are. It's really you make time for things that you enjoy 
and so if you enjoy writing and you enjoy drawing, if you enjoy nature, you know, you make time for those things. It's very important to find what gives you passion. And JT's law, that is one of my biggest passions because it's actually named after my godson, JT, who died by choking death on a hot dog at the age of three. And that was incredibly, so thank you. That was incredibly traumatic and devastating. And it didn't make sense at all because he was a healthy boy. He was a very healthy boy, a very a beautiful child. And I needed to make sense of it. And that's how my mind works. I need to make sense of things. And choking is actually the fourth leading cause of accidental death of young kids. Um, in the United States, a child dies every five days from choking. And over 2,000 children are brought to hospital emergency rooms for choking-related injuries. So even though I thought it was a freak accident, it wasn't. It's common. So the, the point of the foundation is to educate people to find ways to prevent choking because there are ways to prevent choking. Supervision is key. You have to supervise your child, eat. And then there's certain foods that are high risk choking foods. You have to cut them up. You have, you know, so there's certain things. You shouldn't give a child food in a car when you're driving. So the point of the foundation is to really spread this education, make people aware. And the more people that know, the better they do. When you don't know, you can't do better. So that's the point of the foundation. That's amazing what you're doing. Thank you Thank so you. much for the information that you're spreading. I did not realize those statistics. Yes. Um, wow. That is, that is so sad. I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing. Um, Thank you. Do you have like, what do you do? Do you go out and speak to people in, in locations or? I, 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 actually, I do. So I have, if you visited the Facebook page, I have the Facebook page and that's really helpful because if social media, you can reach so many people. So I, I advertise on there. So I spend money to advertise on there so that all the informational tips could go to the masses. And that's wonderful. And then on top of that, I do go to workshops, I call them. I'll go to libraries and schools. And I have a sister-in-law who is a doctor who teaches people how to perform choking rescue procedures, abdominal thrusts. And so we will put on a workshop and I will speak. And then she trains them. And someone walked away learning something and being a little safer for everyone, really. Yeah, that's so important. I'm going to make sure I'm going to put your bio with okay. those links in the description of this video so that everybody who's curious about following those pages can thank find you. those in the description. Yeah. Um, and thank you for all you do. I love the way you're using your book and, you know, your foundation and so many things. You're always spreading comfort, like even your your Facebook page, you're spreading advice and comfort and you're putting so much out there to, to help people. Um, well, I really do try. There's so much negativity out there. You could see images constant. And, and unfortunately, that's the world that we live in right now, that we have the TV, the computers, the phones, and there's just so many negative images. And it being so, you know, empathetic, it, you could feel it. So if you, I can't watch the news for longer than 10 minutes. I really can't. And I refuse to because it, it literally breaks my heart. So I know that, and I do get sad and I do get anxious, but why would I want to share that with you when I know if I put up at a post being like, you know, today was a horrible day, everything stinks. And then everyone's like, yes, it was a horrible day and everything stinks. Why do I want to, you know, populate that? I want to say, you know, the half, half, glass is half full, you know, what do you see? Do you see it as half full? Do you see it as half empty? You know, or there's light in the dark. I just, I want people to know that really life is beautiful. It, it, it truly is. It's, it's a gift. I believe that to be true. And I know that to be true because I've been through many difficult things and I know still that it's such a gift. I'm thankful for every breath I take. I love that positivity that you share and Thank you. experiences and everything that you put out there. Um, I've seen like you post about like self-care and just so yes. many wonderful things. Do you have a favorite piece of advice that you love to tell people and share or use in your own daily life? Well, it came across just recently because I've always been a mom, like you pointed out for many, many, many years. And I was a wife and it I noticed that I was really putting everyone else first. And that was just how I've always done it. And you would say, you know, if that person's happy, then I'm happy. And that's true. That's hundred percent true. I'm as happy as my saddest child. And that's the truth. However, it is my piece of advice is it's very important self-care. It is very important to take care of yourself. It's very important to take those moments to clear your mind, calm down and find joy in different things. Otherwise you'll just get wrapped up in this crazy world and you'll get lost in it. So yeah, my piece of advice would really be 
allow yourself that hour. There's 24 hours in a day. You deserve that hour. You deserve it. And the more that you love yourself and take care of yourself, you are such a better person for other people. You can't, you cannot love somebody unless you love yourself first. So that's, you know, it starts here and then you could really show so much light. That's really great advice. And I think a lot of us forget that sometimes too. So I'm really especially, glad. I would say, especially moms and women. Women, I don't know why we have to prove everything, but we tend to do that. So it's very important to take care of ourselves. Yes, I love that. And in their, their self-care hours, they can sit down and read your beautiful book. I would, oh, I would love that. And they, could reach, <laughs> and they could reach out to me afterwards if they have any questions or want to discuss something. I'm here. <laughs> I love it. I'm looking forward to discussing it all this month. Oh, I wanted to ask you about your process for choosing names because I, I love to do this thing. I'll take the main character's name and I'll look it up of a book I'm reading to see if it matches up with a definition. Mm -hmm. Just out of curiosity. I just love to do it. I looked up Bethany um, and it said that it's a biblical name. Um, the, the home of Lazarus, who Christ raised from the dead. So I was kind of curious if this was very specifically chosen with, with your theme of the book, or did you just kind of pick names out, or how did that work? I, like you, looked up the name after I chose the name. The name just came to me. I didn't know why. I thought when I heard the name Bethany, I knew I wanted a name that would be clear to be a full name and then a nickname. So that's why she's Beth and Bethany. So I needed, I needed something that was easy like that. And I, I don't know any Bethany's. So it wasn't like I chose a name that, you know, I hear frequently. I don't think I hear Bethany very frequently at all. But I knew when I, it popped in my head and I said, oh, that really does, I could see that character and I could use Beth sometimes, I could use Bethany sometimes. So that would clearly work. Her middle name, actually her last name is Grant. And that is, that's my daughter's middle name. So that was, that's taken from her. Um, but no, I just, I, I, it was really me creating characters and then their names coming to me based on the type of person that I described. So Bethany just really seemed, do you think the name suits her? I think well? it does. It actually kind of gives me like chills to think about how well it matches. Yes. <laughs> and and then to find out, yeah. And then to find out it, cause then I, I was like, oh, I wonder if it means something, you know, more. And then I had looked it up and I said, okay, that works. <laughs> yeah, it works really well. <laughs> it works pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I find that amazing. I love that, that it Thank all just kind of worked out the way it, it should. Was meant like, to, yeah. Exactly how it was meant to work out. So if you could talk to any of your characters in real life, what would you mm -hmm. want to ask them? Or what would you talk to them about? If I could speak to any of my characters, it would probably be Tommy. And I would tell him that he is a very loved little boy and that I would love to be his mom <laughs> and I would love to take care of Tommy. And, uh, you know, it was just his upbringing that caused him to be so, you know, he need, they needed a woman in the house, unfortunately, what happened, you know, his story. But I would talk to Tommy and I would because I know that I, at least I felt before whatever happened to him that he would have grown up to be such a, a good man. Like he just had a good heart. So I would tell him, I said, Tommy, you, I know you have a lot going on right now, but you have such a good heart. I see so much goodness in you. That gets me right in the feels. The, your book is so fresh on my mind right now, too. I'm like, oh, Tommy, <laughs> that would be a good conversation. I know, start crying. <laughs> I know, right? It's so good. Oh, Thank I you. love that. That was a great answer. <laughs> that yeah. got me right here. <laughs> Oh, I did want to go back and talk a little bit about your drawing. Okay. Um, I love that you offer those. Do you have favorite things that you like to draw? And do you also continue to draw in your spare time too when you're not doing commissions still? Yes. So I prefer, my preference really is scenery. I like doing sunsets and trees and, you know, because those aren't so specific. They really are more methodical. When you're drawing a portrait of a person, you really have to be exact because you you know that it's not doesn't look like the person. So you, that, that takes a lot of care and detail and um, patience. So and we, a dog or a cat, it, that doesn't have to be as detailed as a person because it's just different. It's just different. But a person really has to look like the person. So those are difficult, but I, I enjoy it because once I get it, it's I'm like, ah, I got it. This, is, this looks just like that person. And I know it's right. So that's why when I do my drawings, I say to people, you know, this is the price, but just so you know, I don't accept any money until after the drawing is done. 
and after you love the drawing. Because I wouldn't want anyone to purchase anything from me that they didn't love. And I owe, I feel confident saying that because when it is, when I'm done with it, it is perfect because I wouldn't present it to them otherwise. But the funnest ones to do is really the scenery ones. I love, I love trees. I have an obsession with trees. I just love trees and I love sunsets. So those are the more fun ones to do. Do you like to go out? Like, do you take a picture and then draw from the picture? Or do you actually kind That's of exactly. there and look at I, I can't do that. Cause I, you know, people always say they love my drawings, but it takes me time. I'd have to camp out for weeks. <laughs> so I do, I, I take a picture and then I, I draw from my pictures. Oh, I love that. Do you share that in your portfolio as well for people to buy or? Yeah, I well, I, one time I had put up a drawing that I was going to allow someone to draw, to buy and then I decided to keep it, but I liked it so much. <laughs> So, and I don't really have that much in between. I do happen to get commissioned a lot. There, there is always someone out of nowhere, and I, I, it's so random. All of a sudden, like a random experience, which I don't believe in random experiences. There's signs. There's no coincidences. My, this is a little sad, but it's still on point. My dog had passed away, and I was, I was, I'm still devastated. It's still kind of, yeah. Thank you. And within a week someone had sent me a picture and it was of, it was, it wasn't a gold, my dog was a golden. It was a lab, which is very similar and looks. And they, she sent me, oh, can you please, my dog had passed away. And, and I was just like, wow, <laughs> that was a sign. And I did, I did a very good job. I really liked that. <laughs> Aww, and and then, we came together at that, that time yes, too. Yes. It was very, very on point. So I, I, I really love drawing. And again, if people just reach out to me, sometimes they don't, and that's fine because I'll just write <laughs> or I'll draw, you know, myself. I, I am kind of busy. With your next book that you're writing, mm -hmm. do you think if you, either route you go with publishing, do you plan to maybe try drawing a picture for it first to kind of keep that as part of your brand? Or what are your thoughts with that? Yeah, I have in my head what I want to draw for it. So I don't know if you if you if you're aware, but hemlock is a flower, and it's a poisonous flower, and it has a sister. Well, they're not related, but this other flower, which is Queen's Anne lace, looks very similar to the hemlock flower. So Queen's Anne Anne's lace is safe, completely harmless. The hemlock is very dangerous. So as you can see, that's an easy title to write into my book, Hemlock about the Ouija board. And so I, I have this vision. Perhaps, I don't know, maybe of like drawing a Ouija board and the planchette, which is the device that moves being maybe a hemlock. That's what I was thinking, but I don't know. I, I, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I love that. Do you plan to keep writing and maybe keep that like flower theme and drawn theme with uh, everything you write? I, I, I would like to say yes. I, I, I didn't mean for it to be a flower, honestly, until the what I just explained to you came to my head and I was like wow that really is you know as far as me trying to explain how dangerous the Ouija board is yet it's sold at like Toys R Us that's you know that's how I, I said that would be perfect for the name title so maybe maybe I, I it would be odd if Wilson and I did something completely not flower related you know for my next book but we'll which you don't have to but I do like to see no, the continuation no I know how it, I like I like things. I like all these little things that connect. It, it's it's a fun journey for re readers to see the author go through a journey as well. And then you see that book online scrolling or something like, oh, I know exactly whose book that is. I got to yes, read more exactly. about what's going on here. Like it just kind of strikes you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think it's kind of cool. Like I'm just noticing the butterfly picture behind you. Yeah, and this is my daughter. I'm the... in my daughter's room. So really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just think it's so cool because you were talking about like the the flower that look alike for your next yes, book yes. and then one's poisonous and one's not and there are a lot of butterflies that do that too so the actual butterflies are poisonous and their lookalikes are not oh, so the really? other animals think that they're poisonous so i just I, I, while i was noticing your picture and ah. thinking about you doing that i thought it was like so cool to that have that all connect. I didn't, so butterflies are poisonous if an animal was to eat it yeah and then there's a lot of look a lot of the species have the lookalike butterflies so that mm -hmm. the other animals already think they're poisonous and they don't eat them Oh, that's yeah. very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I thought that was, as you were explaining it with the flowers, yeah. I'm like, no, that, oh, that's, that's so cool. And you've got the butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was neat how it matched up. It does. <laughs> yeah. I always like to end the interviews talking about reviews because I know okay. that's so important. Um, and again, following your social media, I love the way that you, you know, you talk about reviews. You had a post about, you know, please 
post reviews when you've read my book for other readers. And then you said that it, it means a lot to you too and encourages you. So what do reviews mean to you and where can everybody post their reviews that'll help you after they've read? Well, I'm only, the book is only available on Amazon, but you can post a review on Amazon and as, as well on Goodreads. And then I would love for them to post it on Facebook and share it because really my novel, and I really believe my novel is going to be a bestseller one day. I have absolutely no doubt that it will be. So yes, thank you. I, I really do with all my heart and soul. So I believe it's going to happen through word of mouth because if you have read the reviews on Amazon, which I have a hundred uh, ratings. I think I have like 75 reviews. I'm not sure, sure exactly how many, but the majority of the reviews are very poignant, beautiful pieces that people have written about my novel. So it's going to be word of mouth. So I just need people to keep on speaking about it and sharing their love of it with their friends and family. That it's so, and when I do read it, I, I know, oh, this is, this is why this book exists. It did help someone, it encouraged them, even if it was just for the two days that they read it for, they felt good. They walked away happy. Yes, and I know it's gonna last with me forever after that. It's a beautiful Thank book. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. You, you really have been so on top of this. I appreciate it. I Aww. do. Thank you. I'm, I loved reading your book. I'm enjoying writing the review. I can't wait to well. read your review. I want to read your review. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you love it. I'm going to write it and I'll post it. And then I'm also going to share it with the book club at the end of the month as well. So perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you.